What's going on everybody? Jump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy and having a great day. So in this video, we're gonna try to improve some of my mining rigs by adding the Shelly Wi-Fi switches. We're only gonna be doing four of them today. That rig right there is a problem because when it locks up or freezes, it actually shuts down my entire network switch. But the Wi-Fi still works from the router inside the house. So adding one of these Shelly Wi-Fi switches will totally fix that issue because I always have to have somebody come over here and reset that rig manually because once it shuts down, obviously HiveOS cannot accept the reboot command. And if you do it while it's offline, it 100% knocks out all of the other rigs, which I found that out the hard way today. So either way, what we're gonna do is, like I said, add those four switches in here. I'm gonna put one on this rig, one on this rig, one on this rig, and I'm going to try to put one on the RevTech. But I don't know if there's actually a slot on the RevTech, so I'm going to have to look into the diagram a little bit on that. But these three rigs right here are the ones that usually end up giving me a problem where one shuts down and knocks out the network switch. So I'm gonna try to solve the problem by putting it on the left side of the rack, and the RevTech. If I can't figure out the RevTech today, we'll add it to the other RX580 rig down on the bottom. I figure that's my uh, best solution anyways. So without further ado, I need to get these things all wired up. As you can see, I already did crimp all the ends on the six pins and I pulled out the additional wires. So there's only two wires on these six pin adapters. Then I ended up prepping these three switches that I have here. I just cut the ends off as you can see and I put the uh, little end connectors, the terminal end connectors onto them. Those are the old uh, extra cords and SATA that I ripped out of the uh, six pin. So yeah, we're going to try to power these from a breakout board and then we get to connect them to the Wi-Fi and we get to test to see if they all work before I leave. So let me get these all wired up. I will get that one hooked up and we're going to try to connect it to Wi-Fi. If the Wi-Fi signal is not strong enough. I am praying that this uh, Linksys extended router will actually connect to the router inside the house. That's just an old router I had kicking around from my old house, so I'm hoping it's going to still be valid, but who knows. So yeah, let me hook these up. We'll be right back. There we have it, all prepped. Right here I have the switch end that we're going to be plugging onto the motherboard and obviously the uh, breakout board power supply is on the left side of these switches. So if you guys don't know how to wire these up, please reference my other video. I'll drop a link above. I showed you guys the exact breakdown of how to wire these up. And I forgot to mention in that video, you could totally use this SATA cable to give this Shelly switch power if you don't have any more VGA cables on your ATX PSUs. Basically just do the, uh, the opposite of what we do to the six pins, but you'll have to cut the wires off a little longer and put caps on them. You can't just leave them exposed like that. So if you're gonna use that and the SATA, you know, that's what you gotta do. Also, with the ATX PSU, if you go into the BIOS and you put uh, auto boot when it detects power, like if there's a power outage, and say you use the Shelly switch to power down the rig, Theoretically, it should power back on by itself without needing to use the Shelly Wi-Fi switch. The only reason I thought it wouldn't work is because the Shelly Wi-Fi switch will actually not have power anymore, obviously, if the ATX PSU is off. But if you could signal the motherboard to turn it on, then, you know, that's a pretty decent option. Uh, and then also, I got a lot of comments on people saying that those uh, plug-in 120 volt, uh, what are they, the smart plugs, are cheaper and easier to do. And yes, that is true for a standard ATX PSU. You are correct. But say you have one rig or whatever on 120 volt, okay? And the rest of your rigs are on 240 and you can get a four pack of those for whatever the price is, 50, 60 bucks. To be honest, I'm gonna buy all those because I can use one of these for the 120 volt and the rest of them for 240 because it's all rated for 240. Those smart plugs are not rated for 240 volts, which these are all being powered by off of those PDUs. So 
that's the reason I'm using these instead of those normal uh, smart plugs. That I do have plugged into 120 volt, so I can actually control that thing right off of that. I can shut down the entire network and reboost it if I need to. So, yeah. Just wanted to break that down real quick because I know people in the comments are going to say stuff. So, wanted to give you guys a little uh, reasoning behind why I'm doing what I'm doing. All right, so let's get this rig shut down. We'll hook this up and we'll try to connect it. All right, Shelly switch plugged in right there. We have the power, as you can see, going into the breakout board and the uh, switch end is on the switch port on the board so i'm going to fire up this board all right so that's got power i'm going to fire up this board and what i'm going to do is now get into my phone i'm going to try to connect this shelly switch to the app and we're going to try to turn it on remotely so give me one second so check it out i got ccxd1 which is that rig right there and ccxd4 which is that one down there so this guy that I set up for the test would not work for some reason. I could not get it to connect to the Wi-Fi. So I ended up plugging in the Wi-Fi extender, which is right here. And honestly, that's working great. The network has a strong signal now, so that's not the issue. I still couldn't get this to uh, register for whatever reason. Something is going on with that. I think it's because it's still on the network at my other location. So I hooked up the other two just to see. Prior to me removing the, the test one, I ended up plugging this one in and it connected fine. So I was like, let me see if it's just the bottom rack maybe not getting a strong enough signal. So I tried another one, stuck it in there, fired it up and it registered. So I was like, okay, it must be something to do with that being the test one. So let's show you guys basically how I did this. Doesn't really matter if you power this thing on while it's still plugged in. I'm just not gonna plug in the uh, actual power switch. So I'm going to plug the six pin in to the breakout board, like so. Just clicked it in. That's why I have these uh, covered terminals because I don't wanna risk anything zapping or whatever. But again, plugging it in like that is just fine. So now I'll leave that uh, switch wire right there. That's gonna get plugged in right here at some point, but right now that rig's on. All right, so what we're gonna do is hit these lines up top. We're gonna go to add device. You're gonna connect to your Wi-Fi, and then you're gonna choose the device. As you can see, it wants to join the network. Join. And right there at the top it says success. Device was added to your Wi-Fi network, so that's awesome. All right, so we're in the test room you're gonna hit the back button and then it says right here it says discoverable devices so you want to click it and then it shows you the device then we're gonna to click to add gonna change the device name all right so this one is CCXD2 gonna click the mining rig choose the device image I'm just gonna keep it the same you want to choose relay and hit save now it asks you if you want to be able to connect to the device when you're not on your local network, you want to click yes on that and then it's going to take a minute for it to do its thing. All right, device was successful. So now it's connected to the cloud. All right, so let's plug this thing in, shall we? And test it. Theoretically, this should be on. It shouldn't break the connection right now, plugging it in. All right, so as you can see, we plugged her in. If it wasn't powered up, it would say device doesn't have power somewhere right here. So let's hit the power button. Bang. It just shut off. Let's turn it back on. Let's see. Wow. That's amazing. This is going to make my life so much easier. Just to test another one, let's do uh, let's do the one down there. That's CCXD4. Ready? So I'll hit the button and we'll see if she goes off. And she did. 
Back on. Takes a second to kick back on, but uh, push it once, shuts off, push it twice, comes right back on. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. I'm so excited. All right, well, let's, uh, I guess, let's plug this one in too, shall we? So right here on the H110s, you do these last two pins on the top row. That's the power switch, so right there. I know it's kind of hard to see, but uh, it's just plugged in. So this is CCXD1. The Shelly's still registering in the phone app, so we know uh, we know she's good. All right, so CCXD1. Bang. Just shut off. All right, I'll turn it back on. See this blue screen? Just turn it back on, and <laughs> it comes right back. Oh my gosh, these things are amazing. I'm so excited. You guys, you don't understand how much time this is going to save me by just having these little Wi-Fi switches connected to my problem rigs, which are these ones that would shut down basically my entire network. The RevTech once in a while shuts down, but that one doesn't affect the rest of the network. I need to figure out how to put a switch on that, but I don't really want to do it with this one right here because it's already giving me issues trying to connect. So I am going to take that one and right now I'm going to try to connect it down to the bottom right one just because I know where the pins are and I want to see if it picks up the Wi-Fi network. I really don't think it's going to, but it's worth a shot. So give me a second. Let me hook this one all up. All right. No dice. Tried it again, didn't work. So the problem with this is, I added it to the network at my other location like you guys saw in that other video. And I need to do a factory reset on it so it's not connected to that network. As far as I know, because like in the settings of the other ones, I saw a factory reset section. So I'm assuming before I deleted it from the room, I probably should have actually factory reset it. So now I have to take it home and factory reset it there before I could bring it back but either way guys I am super pumped that those three rigs on the left hand side all have these switches and they all function properly and on top of that that Wi-Fi extender is actually working because it would not work on my Verizon stuff but yeah as always guys hopefully you uh, learned something today I appreciate you all for watching please stay safe and I'll see you guys real soon